Hello, I want to take a few minutes to take you through the lot traceability function within NetSuite. Uh, very critical to many industries, predominantly the food industry, to be able to handle a lot recall in a very efficient and timely manner. So let's take the scenario where a customer calls and tells us that there is a product that they're having issues with from a quality standpoint. A lot of times they will know the lot number, we're given that information when we deliver it, but let's just do a scenario where they don't have a lot number. I can go in and a customer calls and we can just go run the sales order by customer detail report. In this example, I'm just gonna say uh, the customer meets called and said that there's a problem with one of the products that they just received and I can look at the time frames. You know, we delivered a, an order on January 6th last week, as well as I have a future order out there. So maybe they say, you know, it's just a, a recent delivery and there's an issue with one of the products. So I can see on that recent delivery, we delivered the Salsa 107 uh, is the product. And I can easily go in and find out what lot that was by hitting the inventory detail. I'm looking at, I can see it's jar 100. You can get the same information from multiple reports within NetSuite. This is just one of the easy ways to go in and find out within a few clicks um, the orders that went to that customer as well as the products as well as the lot number. So very easy. So now I can come over here to my traceability and lot traceability, you see, and I'm going to see everything that's happened to that Salsa 107 and what customers it was delivered to. So I'm gonna do a backward trace because we're starting with the finished good. We wanna go back up the supply chain and I'm gonna do it by location. I'm gonna enter my item, which is the Salsa 107. And we know the lot number now is jar 100. I'm gonna open the time frame up a little bit so we make sure we encapsulate everything. And I hit the submit, and it brings me into a screen where we have a number of tabs. We have the build tab that's going to take me through the manufacturing process of the assemblies. I have other transactions, which is either inventory adjustments, warehouse transfers. The procurement tab, which shows me where I bought this product and where I bought the ingredients, as well as fulfillments of what other customers were delivered this product. Okay, So I can easily just start clicking in here. I want to click the box, include inventory details. And if I start drilling down on this, I see that work order W002 um, was the end result. And I start drilling down into these items. So what's ha happening here is we have tomato, onion, cilantro, jalapeno, and lime that went into work order 001. Then we took work order 001 and we converted that using uh, the uh, batch numbers over here to the right, that went into the Salsa 106. Salsa 106 then, um, either through packaging or putting the jar and the lid together, going through another machine, was the creation into work order 002. So you can see we have the ability to handle assemblies and sub-assemblies. What's nice here is the ingredients are listed with their lot number, as well as expiration date, which is key. So that's great, we know what manufacturing process, um, what ingredients went into the Salsa 107, but where did I buy these products from? I can come over here to the procurement tab and see that those ingredients, I start drilling down and I can see that the tomato, where did I get the tomato from? And I can see that it was on PO388, from Frisco, here is the lot number, FS100, and just giving you that information with one click. I can see you know, all these ingredients where I procured them from. Similar to the procurement, in this next click, I can go to the fulfillments, and I can see that Salsa 107 went to all these other customers as well. So it's great, you know, Meats called and had the issue, but I now need to contact you know, Taggart's, Cooper, Acme, and me do. Um, here's the sales orders that went to those customers. So proactively, I can see JAR 100 went to all of these other customers, and I need to contact them, all right? So very powerful. All within a few clicks, I was able to get all that information. The next thing I could do, um, if I did some batch analysis testing, and I found out that the tomato was the actual product that's bad, 
I can then go back down the supply chain and do a forward trace. So instead of a backward trace from the finished good, let's do a forward trace because the tomato is bad. And I can go choose that tomato. And I know the lot is FS100. Let's open the time window up a little bit. And I hit submit. I'm going to get the very same screens here with the ability to get a lot of the same information, but we're starting it from the tomato and doing a top-down approach. So not only work order one and two, which we saw, but we're also doing work orders three, four, five, and six, which could be going out to other customers. Um, it could still be in your warehouse. We still have, where did we get that tomato on the procurement, which is gonna give you the duplicate information that you saw before. But here we're able to see on the fulfillment side, uh, the Salsa 107 went to those customers that we saw before. So this is giving you the same view. But we also have other batches, assemblies three, four, five, and six. And maybe those uh, batches went out to additional customers. So you see I drill down and I don't have any. So what I'll find here is these batches are still in inventory. If I go run inventory reports, you're gonna see those are still on the shelves within the warehouse, which is great because then I can go um, pull those from the shelves immediately. So I went up the supply chain. I can go down the supply chain starting with the ingredient. And then here you have the ability to export all this information to Excel anytime. Uh, which is needed a lot of times for quick analysis to send to reports to the FDA, USDA, or whoever is needing them. Um, if you have any questions on this, uh, please contact your sales rep and uh, we'll be happy to show you any more features and functions uh, that is required. Thanks and have a great day.